All right. So here we are on a Sunday evening uh, talking about the global crisis. And uh, so I want to welcome everyone. Um, and so I know that uh, many of our patients have expressed a, a great interest in this teleconference. And uh, I want to start off by saying that I believe, I really believe that uh, everything happens for a reason. And uh, I know this is a very serious topic, and it is a crisis because it's gone global. It's a pandemic, which we'll talk about the difference between epidemic and a pandemic. And uh, so because of that, you know, we can always look at the positive side. There's always something that will come out of uh, a crisis. I really believe that. And that if we um, look at the positive side, you know, we can become more aware of what we can do uh, to stay healthy and be healthy. And so there's three words that I thought about after a lot of prayer and a lot of um, thought and pondering about the three things that I would use to describe uh, this teleconference today. And that is, number one is to be aware. So the more aware that you are, um, you know, the more information and knowledge you have, which I'm going to share with you. After 20 years of clinical experience, those of you who haven't met me before, I'm a holistic practitioner of 20 years. I have five different degrees. Uh, one of them is in Asian medicine, kinesiology, chemistry. I was almost an electrical engineer. So I have a lot of training in engineering as well. And it's because of this combination of um, degrees and experience of 20 years of uh, clinical experience has allowed me to put together a very unique way and a very unique viewpoint, if you will, of how the body, um, you know, how we get sick and how we get well. And it's really important to be more aware of your body. And that's what these teleconferences are about. We're going to be talking about food as medicine and um, how we can stay healthy. And if you're not healthy, how you can get healthy and uh, why it's important, you know. And so this is also to create community. Uh, the second thing is to be prepared, you know. So, uh, you know, many times we're just not prepared for things to happen when there's a crisis. Uh, we're very fortunate and blessed uh, because we had more warning uh, than the Chinese did in Wuhan where everything started. And uh, so, and yet we still haven't really seen the full repercussions of this problem, this crisis, you know, this virus. That's why we decided uh, to do this conference immediately and that it was important to go online uh, so that you could still, you know, because I know that it's been required that we've become more isolated um, and um, stay in our homes more. We're not able to travel. And, and uh, so this is a great way to create community and uh, still feel connected. So I want to thank you once again for being here. And the third uh, purpose of today's, you know, conference is really for you to be healthy and happy. Because, you know, when you think about it, when you have a cold or something even more serious, you know, it's really, it's hard to feel happy, you know, and to feel productive and to even think clearly or to even be happy in life. And so it's really all about being aware, being prepared, and being healthy and happy. And so those are the words that come to me uh, in this conference. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so I would like to you know, invite you in the future to invite all your family and your friends. Uh, we're also, this is being recorded. So for some reason you weren't able to see this, um, that you'll be able to watch it later. Uh, we'll have this um, on all of our social media. We also have a membership site if you want more information and more videos to watch. Uh, like I said, I've been teaching for 20 years. And so we have a lot of videos to watch about your health and how to stay healthy. So, uh, so I want to start off with uh, getting away from fear, you know, so I don't really feel like we have to be uh, fearful. We just have to be aware and we have to be prepared, like I said. And so, uh, so I'm, by the way, this is the cover to my book that I'm finishing this year. And um, so I'm determined to finish this book. And uh, one of the major chapters is on the immune system. I mean, what could be more important than a healthy and strong immune system? Which brings me to my uh, next slide, which is ancient wisdom with modern technology. So I'm going to share a story with you about uh, a recent discovery that they made. And this was um, in um, the mountains outside of Greece that they found um, 
basically uh, some writings of Noah, you know, in the Bible. And they found that there's these people that are living, um, you know, centenarians that live much longer than most people on the earth. And that uh, they believe that there are some writings from Noah about how they were to take care of their bodies and that this was passed down uh, and that this was uh, inspiration that was given to Noah. And, uh, and that they still follow this today. And one of them, as an example, is uh, a special type of salt. It's like a gray salt. Uh, and they believe that it has such high selenium in it. And we know that selenium is also found in Brazil nuts. So here's a tip to start off with about food is that, you know, by eating Brazil nuts, it's a great way to boost your immune system. Just consuming one to two and even three Brazil nuts a day is a great source of selenium which is a major immune support. So who would know that, um, that these people and this information they received from Noah. So I call this the ancient wisdom, which is really part of our practice, which is why I believe in um, ancient medicine, which is what I, one of my degrees is in, is Asian medicine. So we know that it really works. Even 5,000 years later, between acupuncture and nutrition and herbal medicine, it really works. So that's just one example of many of how we can use this ancient wisdom to help people even with a modern problem that we have today. It still works. It's amazing. And as you know, the crisis is uh, a crisis, especially if we're just relying alone on Western medicine as far as, you know, because the people that are getting sick, you know, Western medicine is there, um, fortunately, uh, to be able to help with um, uh, breathing machines, and because we know that this coronavirus will uh, lead to um, a fibrosis of the lungs, basically, and an inability to breathe and pneumonia. So the virus really attacks the lung tissue, and uh, but you have to be a host for it to be able to be effective. Otherwise, the virus uh, really isn't effective for those people that remain healthy and strong. And the question is, how healthy are you? So we have some modern technology that we also combine with all of my training, which is a Zyto cradle that you see on the screen, which is out of Germany. So with 60 years of research, and um, Zyto has been around for about 11 years, um, but the research of this EAV machine has been around for 60, with Dr. Vol, who's the first doctor that discovered it, a way to measure acupuncture points in the hand. So what this allows us to do in the clinic, if you come in as a patient, you know, as a regular patient, we're always constantly testing your immune system. And there really is no direct way besides white blood cell count or T cell count in Western medicine to know exactly how your immune system's doing, except through blood testing. Well, uh, we can take another angle on this and find out how all the organs work together and treat your whole body as a system. Uh, which the immune system is. There's actually, you know, close to 12 different parts to the immune system that people don't realize. You can't just point your one finger to your immune system because there's so many pieces to it, which we'll talk about in a minute. So there's also another technique that we use that's modern technology to test your immune system called a phase angle. So I highly recommend that if you are already a patient, make sure you ask me to be tested to test your immune system both with kinesiology, I can figure out, you know, how strong your immune system is and uh, give you a number. Uh, I usually like to do that once a year for all of our patients to make sure that they're not heading towards cancer or some serious disease. Uh, but if you're a new patient, you'd like to become a new patient, uh, then definitely uh, let's get you in, get you scheduled. And uh, I want you to know also that um, some people have this fear, you know, of course, of traveling and which is with reason and um, going to different locations. But I really feel that we have a low risk clinic because we don't we're not really we're not accepting people that are sick with a fever or a cough, which are the major symptoms or shortness of breath of, uh, you know, as far as the coronavirus. Therefore, we feel like we have really because we're not a hospital, but we are preventive care. We also do a serious diseases as well. I um, have a lot of experience with uh, immune system support and building customized nutritional programs for your body. And you really need to know, um, you know, what's going on. I mean, you need to know the weak points of your body. And if you don't know the weak spots of your body, 
uh, it's like a chain. I kind of describe it like a weak chain, links in a chain. You need to know that because if you don't know what your weak point is, and if it is your lungs and, and or your immune system or your spleen, maybe your adrenal glands, if you're really tired a lot, all of these are major risk factors for uh, getting sick and or being a carrier because there's three different types of uh, categories as far as this virus. And one is, you know, healthy people that don't get sick at all, a second group of people that are carriers, and the last people that are infected and test positive uh, with the virus. So we feel like we offer a lot here. It's taken me years to put all this together. We are unique. Um, we are a global clinic. I want you to know also we can help any family or friends anywhere in the world. We have patients in Japan, Australia, New Zealand, um, even South Africa. So uh, that's why we call this a, a global teleconference because uh, we are a global clinic. So never let that hold you back. If you are sick, you know, then we will uh, do a phone conference with you. If you have a fever of any kind, we won't allow anyone in that's, uh, that's sick um, with a fever to protect the rest of our patients. So uh, make sure you keep your appointments Stay in your program. If you're not on a program, make sure you make an appointment. So, so with that said, let's continue on with this modern technology and ancient wisdom approach. So I wanted to share with you a story that's near and dear to my heart. And um, it was really a difficult time for me uh, because I grew up in South Sacramento. So for those of you that aren't from Sacramento, you know, South Sacramento is um, kind of the ghetto. It's a very difficult area. There was a lot of shootings and robberies and um, Hell's Angels. And it was just a very scary time uh, to live and grow up in that neighborhood. But one of the things that I learned um, is that there was just, a, you know, just different things that you had to be aware of. You had to be aware, once again, that word of what was going on in your surroundings. So I just knew that not to stay out late at night. And uh, we would just ride our bikes everywhere. So we got lo lots of exercise. We knew to stay away from certain neighborhoods. And um, we just knew that to kind of respect the environment. And so that's what we're kind of talking about is being aware of your body and being aware of the situation. Instead of falling into fear, uh, we're going to make you aware of what's going on and how you, what you can do to become more proactive. Because that's what it's about is staying away from Avoiding fear and just being um, aware that there is hope. There really is hope about staying healthy. I really believe that uh, many people can avoid this crisis by staying healthy and by not leaving their front door open. So what do I mean by that? Well, the crisis I went through as a child, I remember as a, a young uh, teenager, we had gone on a trip, and it was a beautiful trip to Yosemite. Every year we went to Yosemite on vacation, and as you know, Yosemite is a beautiful area. It's unbelievable. It's just like um, heaven on earth as far as the beauty of the earth in that area, Yosemite. And so when we came back, though, unfortunately, um, we really were not prepared. We were not aware of how um, you know vulnerable our house was. Um, my mom... At the time, she was a single mom, and, and we had gone on this vacation, and it was so relaxing. We came back, and we found that our house that had been actually ransacked and stolen, everything that we owned that was of any value had been stolen from us. And if you can just imagine, if anyone's ever experienced that, it's just a terrible feeling. Well, what we didn't realize was that we really weren't prepared uh, for this event, and uh, we had no idea... Uh, that somebody could easily break in through our windows, and which they did. And so they got in through a window. Uh, they backed up some cars, some trucks, and they emptied our house completely and uh, destroyed a lot of things inside the house. So from that experience, we went to some experts, which were the police department, and uh, they gave us some uh, tips as to what we needed to do to protect and fortify our house. So here we were living in a dangerous situation, which was a dangerous neighborhood, which would be kind of this global event that we have now, this crisis. And uh, they explained to us that, you know, you need to make sure that you put something sticks, you know, uh, rods in front of your windows so they can't break in and sticks um, behind the window so they can't slide the windows open easily. 
and deadbolts, and you have to put in an alarm system. So we fortified and strengthened our house, and that never, ever happened again. And I felt so secure as a young boy um, after my mom had done all of this work and I helped her. We worked together as a family and had a lot of the work done by a contractor, an expert. We realized that um, now we were aware. And once we had that information about what to do to protect our, our house, which is like your body, uh, then we realized we didn't have to be attacked or destroyed or we didn't have to lose our health if you will, or our valuables. So how valuable is your health to you? You know, do you really value your health by eating the right foods, exercising daily, drinking water every day, enough water, drinking purified water, which we'll talk about in more conferences to come? You know, do you really get enough sleep to strengthen your immune system? Are you in a positive uh, relationships in your life to stay positive? You know, it's really important because a negative relationship will take your immune system down to the ground. And so remember that as a, you know, as a, an important factor is your social network, you know, staying around people that are positive, that think like you do and think in a positive way. So, um, so with that said, I, I'm happy to tell you that it was such a relief to never be robbed again in our house and to have a protection. So do you leave your front door open? So the ways you do that is not enough sleep, not enough water, not enough exercise, or no exercise, or eating refined white sugar and white flour, drinking alcohol, you know, all of these things can, um, and, and having a lot of stress, you know, not um, thinking about things through or having a plan. I always say, you know, anyone that knows me say, I have a plan, you know, let's work out the plan. So you have to have a plan, and that's what I invite you to do today, is to have a plan to stay healthy, and happy, you know, and to use this information to be aware. And that's the purpose of today. So here we are, some uh, facts. So moving forward, the, the uh, COVID-19 stats. So new coronavirus infections are doubling every four days around the world. That's an alarming rate, you know. So some people say, well, it's not a big deal. It's just another flu. Well, the problem is, is that in the last three months total, since it started in Wuhan, China, it's very much, um, it's pretty much, you know, spreading at a rapid rate. And that's what's concerning. The mortality rate is approximately, <coughs> excuse me, 2%. And uh, so we know that the Spanish flu is around 2.5%. And we really haven't seen the full effects of, uh, of this virus. So it's still in the incubation stage as far as, you know, we are behind Italy and then uh, China is, you know, recovering uh, somewhat is what we hear. We don't know the stats on that. And one of the things that I would say is that it's really, uh, we can't really rely fully on the stats or the information from China, unfortunately. So therefore, there's a lot of unknown. So the virus is transmitted between people who are clo in close contact with one another, which is why we've been um, indicated to um, self-quarantine, basically. Um, as much as possible and only go out for those things that are necessary. And I would honestly consider, you know, a medical treatment such as coming to the clinic for your treatments with us is uh, necessary. And it is a medical necessity to stay healthy. So don't miss your appointments. Uh, and then, uh, and then, you know, they say within six feet, and we also know it's uh, through, spread through respiratory droplets uh, through infected persons through coughing or sneezing. So pandemic versus epidemic. So let's talk about that for a second. So, you know, uh, the CDC is, you know, finally after, I think it was two days ago, has declared that it is a pandemic uh, that we're dealing with. That in, an epidemic is uh, different than a pandemic is basically that it's worldwide. Uh, so we know that uh, pretty much every country uh, almost has been affected, and um, West Virginia was the only state that I saw in the United States uh, on last night's report that was not affected, but uh, the other issue is that, you know, we don't have test kits. We don't really have enough um, information in the United States, unlike other areas like South Korea and uh, China, you know, they have more test kits, so they know they have more stats that are realistic. So, we don't even know how many people are really infected because 
we don't have enough test kits to test people. That is changing soon because of these drive, uh, drive by um, test stations, which will be in parking lots uh, starting soon. So, you know, the frenzy here is, as you know, is, you know, if uh, people are buying uh, toilet paper in uh, high quantities and um, hand sanitizers and, you know, the only problem, the base, biggest problem with that is that uh, people are going to run out of toilet paper because they bought all the toilet paper so that other people can't buy it. And, uh, but there's plenty of toilet paper. So the first thing I want to say is, do not worry about toilet paper. I mean, it's important to have paper goods, but leave some toilet paper for somebody else so that other people can have some. And I know that sounds funny, but the truth is that uh, it's true. You know, there's plenty of toilet paper. Toilet paper is American made and uh, we're fine. So, but the thing that's more important, ironically, that I feel that people are not buying are some of the superfoods, which we're going to talk about in a, a little bit that you should be buying like lemons and apples and vitamin C rich um, uh, foods that will help boost your immune system and avoiding sugar, making sure you have an exercise equipment in your, your house uh, in case and when we do get fully quarantined, uh, it's important they have a way to exercise. It could be as simple as a trampoline in the backyard um, and or a jump rope and uh, maybe some exercise bands or an exercise ball. So these are some things we're going to talk about in more detail to come. So who's at risk? Like we said, there's, um, you know, basically it started in China. And uh, we know that the people that are sick from other illnesses that are older, you know, um, 60 years old or, or more are at more risk. Uh, this seems to be attacking, this virus seems to be attacking people uh, that are, um, you know, 50 years and above or so. Uh, but I've heard some recent reports that that's not necessarily true, that people are in their 30s that are being attacked by this virus as well. And I would say to you, you know, how can you be sure or how can you uh, protect yourself is just, you know, really protect your immune system and learn about how to do that. We have a program that I've created uh, that will be coming out next week or so is uh, 10 ways 10 steps to a super immune system in 10 days. So you need to know what to do, you know? And uh, so I've studied this my whole life for 40 years. I've studied nutrition and uh, my dad was a bodybuilder, an organic farmer. And he really taught me from a young boy how to do these things and how to take care of myself and how everything starts in the soil and how we need to take care of ourselves and our health. And our health really should be valued um, because, you know, when we have health, then we can take care of other people, such as our family. So basically, people that have chronic medical conditions and they're older tend to be the ones and also lung conditions. So if you have any of these conditions, make sure you come in and get tested so I can test your immune system, get a number on it, find out how I can strategize to help you get on the best foods and the best supplements for your body and the best therapies that we still offer here in the clinic. So don't forget that. So your immune system is like a fortress, or at least it should be. But many times, uh, you know, the problem is it's kind of like heart disease. You know, it's just like sudden, right? Like you think you have a strong immune system because you don't get colds or flus, but you just really don't know for sure until you get tested. And I'm not talking about getting tested for the virus itself. That's one type of testing. But wouldn't it be nice to know how strong your immune system is? Well, we offer that here in the clinic it really is possible to find out that number and find out, quantify it, which is awesome. So there are basically five major plagues that have occurred throughout history. And um, so this is, once again, a pandemic. And uh, so one of the oldest plagues that we know of in history was in the year 541 when rats were on Egyptian grain boats and brought a pestilence to the Eastern Roman Empire that would ultimately leave approximately 25 million people dead. So let me repeat that, 25 million people, that's a lot. And so, you know, it's interesting to me. I love to study things. I'm always reading about health and nutrition and, and, um, and you know, just improving our lives, you know, because it's so great when you can uh, really get control of, understand something better, understand what you need to do to get better and become better. 
And so that's the positive here is that you can become better. You can become stronger and healthier, even in the middle of a crisis, actually. And sometimes it's a driving force, right, for us all to really stop and reflect upon what's important to us. You know, how much does our family really mean to us? And what we can do to become stronger and healthier and and really put our time into the things that matter most. So people had problems, you know, even back then that, uh, you know, a lot of disease was spread through boats and uh, through travel. And now we have planes that, you know, really we can spread this disease very fast, which is why they've cut off the borders at this point in, as far as European travel uh, just the other day, which makes sense because uh, planes are big carriers of disease, just like boats were even back in 541. So the Black Plague was another plague, uh, and that was just devastating to so many. And this was even before we even had the ability or understanding of washing our hands. So I'm just going to imply that this is just implied that we should be washing our hands, not touching our face or our eyes, and, um, and even our nose, too. So, you know, it's through the sinus membranes that this virus is spread, as we discussed, through coughing, sneezing and uh, making contact, you know, through the air uh, and touch. So um, the Black Plague was the 14th century in Europe with a population of 450 million and at least 75 million people are believed to have perished throughout the pandemic with some estimate as high as 200 million. So we didn't have as much technology to count, you know, and keep track of people. So it was just an estimate, but those are some serious times. So the thing I look at, too, is that I always learn from the past, right? When you look back at the past and you think of what we learn from the past is that people did get through even the Black Plague. I mean, you know, we're still ongoing as a society and, and um, as a human race. We're still alive and up and running, and uh, people did survive these difficult times, earthquakes and plagues. And so, you know, to stay positive looking back, you know, uh, we have to look at why People survived even the most difficult plagues because they had a strong immune system. So the Spanish flu of 1918 probably hits home the closest to us because, well, when you think about it, it was only over 100 years ago. So that's not very far away from where we are now when you think about it. It's pretty close to home. So as many as 50 million people are believed to have died, and approximately 25 million of those deaths came in the first 25 weeks of the outbreak. So this is why I kind of compare the Spanish flu to this coronavirus in many ways. The Spanish flu really, um, ironically, Avery and I were just discussing this, how it really um, attacked even kind of a younger population as well, which is a little bit different than what we're seeing right now. But um, so many times these viruses, there's thousands of viruses that exist. And uh, so they've always been there. We don't really know the source of this virus. I mean, there's some speculation that it's man-made. Um, I have my, my thoughts and ideas, but uh, I'm just trying to, I want to really present truth to you, what I know really the facts of what to be true, both clinically what I found to be effective and the facts that I found to be facts and, and not guess. So, so uh, at this point, we really don't know for sure. There's estimates that it comes from animals. Uh, coronavirus are groups of viruses that exist already, even in the animal population. Typically in the past uh, history, um, these viruses have not jumped from uh, animal species to a human. They've pretty much stayed either with animals or with humans. And so that's what we know is, you know, to be true. Uh, so with that said, the Spanish flu is really the closest to what we know. Like I said, it's 2.5% uh, death rate. And uh, that's what they estimate that we're, we would be headed currently on a global uh, estimate. But we don't know for sure because this isn't over yet. So with this said, let's look at the timeline quickly. I'll just run through this quickly. And that is that uh, basically the first case was reported December 8th. And we know that, um, that there was um, a lot of information that was hidden in the beginning. Uh, for whatever reason, um, it wasn't let known to the world. Chinese experts on uh, December 30th arrived in Wuhan to assess the virus. And then uh, January 1st was the first deaths were occurring. So that wasn't very long ago. So um, 
Once again, we're only talking about a few months. So uh, January 14th, the local Chinese media arrested for reporting on the virus. And uh, so we know the media, you know, we're blessed and fortunate to live in this country in many ways because we have the freedom um, of the media. On the other hand, the media can, as you know, can be uh, very disturbing and can be misleading. So uh, I would just encourage you to um, continue to listen on our teleconferences. And, and uh, I have um, uh, direct sources that I, I feel are credible of this information that I'm getting. And um, it's, it's a good idea sometimes to take a media break, just turn off the, the TV because it can be just disturbing in general, you know? So, um, so with that said, uh, January 18th, the local government allows 100,000 people to attend local New Year's banquet. So as we know that that's where things spread even more fully because people were infected and uh, Chinese New Year, it was a big, you know, event where people were in con close contact. And January 18th, Chinese government says the virus is uh, dangerous. And January 21st, New Year's celebration in large groups, more contaminated. Uh, the government mandates wearing medical masks. Now, we've, I've heard through a lot of medical testimonies and different doctors that are experts in Western medicine that um, the people that are contaminated are the ones that should be wearing the mask. Um, versus the ones that are not. So, um, so that's still debatable. But uh, January 23rd, quarantine of Wuhan City. And my understanding is they just bulldozed the, the streets so people could not leave the streets. They also uh, weren't um, able to get gasoline to drive in the cities. And so they pretty much shut the city down. And uh, we don't have that kind of, uh, you know, that type of a situation, the same situation, you know. So which is why we're being asked to self-quarantine. Uh, but that's basically what happened. And then the national government blames the mayor of Wuhan for everything, and he resigns. So this is where the, uh, the coronavirus has been confirmed to be uh, located. And um, uh, Avery, this, yeah, this is February 17th. So this is like, um, you know, basically uh, a month ago, roughly. And you can see where... Um, you know, China, of course, has that's where it started, where it has the most cases. And then you see uh, something going on in Europe there, and then the U.S., and, um, and nothing really in Canada at that point. This is Newsweek. Then finally, uh, March 13th, which is the latest, you can see that there's 1,600-plus uh, cases, more cases in New York than anywhere in the United States is what we know so far. But once again, we don't have any, enough test kits to know for sure. So these statistics aren't exactly uh, accurate in my mind for that reason. And that will be changing, is what they say. Um, uh, Italy, you know, we know that we are behind Italy because it started in China and then Italy and then the U.S., so then the U United States. So uh, China, from my understanding, is on, um, on a recovery uh, trend, that they actually are recovering. Um, and uh, so that's positive and uh, very hopeful. So uh, some people can, like I said, there's three different types of uh, cases. One is uh, the first group are people that uh, do not have the virus at all, that have a healthy immune system. So what's the answer? A healthy immune system. So the question is, how healthy is your immune system and how can you get it uh, to be stronger? And, uh, and that's what I'm here to help you do. Uh, and we're going to tell you at the very end, you know, uh, 10 steps that you can do and how we can help you achieve that, you know, a healthier immune system. The second is a group of carriers. So that means that your immune system would be weak enough to carry the virus because viruses need a host, you know, which we'll talk about in a minute. So, um, so you have to be a host of the virus in order to even be a possible carrier. And then, of course, there's people that are sick, you know, and we know the fever, the cough, the dry cough, and the uh, shortness of breath or the inability to breathe uh, fully are all major symptoms of the, uh, this type of virus. So the immune system is really uh, a protection. It's, uh, it involves our skin. It involves our, uh, you know, immune system. It is our lymphatic system, our spleen, our adrenal glands. Even our thyroid is involved with our immune system. 
So uh, this is basically defined as the bodily system that protects the body from foreign substances, cells, and tissues. So I liken it to almost like airport security is another example. And so if airport security is working properly, then uh, you know they will not let a terrorist with a, a gun on the plane. But if your immune system is confused, and we know that we um, this is a new virus to us and to the world, um, which is why we have suspicions as to where it came from initially. Uh, out of Wuhan, we know for sure. But because of that, then uh, we don't have a natural antibodies, you know, to fight off this virus, unless you have a strong immune system that will go in like airport security, recognize the terrorist that's trying to get through airport security, uh, really um, you know, arrest the terrorist so that he doesn't hurt anyone and cause any damage. Uh, but unfortunately, the, um, in this case of the airport security that's gone bad, if you have a weak immune system, then terrorists are getting through the airport security, getting past the officials, with guns and things that will cause damage on a plane and uh, possibly harm and kill people on a plane, causing it to crash or, you know, injure people through, um, you know, using a gun. So that's the example that I use for our immune system, how it should work. It needs to recognize uh, problems, recognize problems such as viruses, as the coronavirus, uh, to eliminate it um, so that it doesn't get into our cells into our bodies, into our mucous membranes, and that's how a strong immune system works. So here's a, a timeline that a lot of people, different types of uh, immune systems. So there's a healthy immune system in the middle, and then there's, uh, to the left is colds, flus, and people that would get the coronavirus, and then people that have cancer. So cancer is a really bad situation, obviously, you know, a health condition that nobody wants and that we all fear. And now we're fearing, people are fearing uh, getting the flu, the coronavirus, and uh, getting sick and um, losing their lives over this terrible infection. Well, it's really no different than cancer or any kind of cold or flu, except that it causes more damage to people that have weakened immune system. Uh, but the good news is that you can have a strong immune system with doing certain activities on a regular basis and by taking care of yourself. To the right is an overactive immune system. We talk a lot about uh, allergies and then uh, autoimmune problems, which I deal with a lot as well in the clinic, clinically. So autoimmune is just another part of, um, you know, uh, people that are sick and have inflammation in their body. So we want to make sure we stay in the middle. We don't want to have an excessive immune system. Um, if you have allergies, you know, or an autoimmune, you know, uh, this condition can swing back the other way. It can actually become overworked and uh, lead to an underactive immune system. I've seen this happen clinically time and time again. So bacteria are uh, different than this virus we're talking about because there are live organisms and uh, they are not as destructive. Uh, they can cause problems for sure. And uh, so this is not a bacteria. Superbugs are, um, you know, really what this is about are these superbugs that are being created uh, through the use of a lot of antibiotics since the 40s when penicillin was first created. And uh, so this is, uh, I would call this like a superbug. And uh, so viruses are living organisms that cannot replicate without a host. So they need your cells to duplicate. And once they get into the cell, because you have a weak cell membrane, that's why I always say you're only as healthy as your cells. So remember, if you take care of yourself and you know that your cells are healthy, which is another test that we do when we test your immune system, we determine um, how healthy your cells are, how hydrated you are. It's the same test I mentioned initially. So you should come in and get that test, you know, ask for the immune system test and the cellular test, which we can do for you. So, uh, so, by the way, the viruses are the most common entity, you know, uh, on the planet. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of viruses that exist, but they lay dormant unless they have a host. So don't become a host, you know, by uh, not taking care of yourself and uh, being aware of uh, what you can do to be healthier and stronger. 
So the coronavirus is basically, uh, it looks like this, basically, where it has its own uh, information. And once it, uh, it like takes over and starts copying uh, itself, duplicating itself, once it has a host. So do not become the host. So the spleen is another organ that we need to talk about, which is related to exercise. It lives on the left side of your ribs, you know, on the left side here and uh, underneath your rib cage. So it's a very, very important filter. It's connected to your skin and your immune system. So by doing uh, exercise, you'll help your spleen and uh, the filtration of your white blood cells and red blood cells to keep you healthy. The kidneys and the adrenals are also important because they're filtering organs, uh, the kidneys. But the adrenals are really important. So if you are a very tired person, you're fatigued all the time, you wake up tired, you don't have energy to do things, then you're really susceptible potentially. I mean, you need to work on your adrenal glands. So come on in and, uh, you know, or just take our course, my 10-day course coming up next week. Uh, which is 10 ways to a super immune system in 10 days. So you have to have strong adrenal glands. This is why I suggest citrus fruit is very important right now. So mandarins, uh, kiwis, blueberries as well. That's not a citrus, but um, kiwis and citrus, grapefruit, and lemons are all really important to, because the extra vitamin C will help support your adrenal glands and your immune system at the same time. Also get enough sleep. So you, as we know, you know, when you get less than seven hours of sleep a night, uh, you're definitely more susceptible. You can almost feel your body like crashing, right? Like leaving the door open to your front door. And who would do that, right? Would you feel safe leaving your front door open? Then why would you get less than seven hours of sleep a night? You're just leaving your front door open to this virus. So the gut is another, it's called the microbiome. So we know that this is an important uh, part of being healthy. So if you don't have regular bowel movements, if you have terrible odor when you have a bowel movement, I know this is kind of personal. And um, for those of you who have just met me for the first time, you know, uh, we talk about everything. You know, I'm a very open person and um, we really feel like our community is family to us. And so we, we're not afraid to talk about anything because it's important to know about your bowel movements, you know? And uh, so if you don't have regular bowel movements, if you take an antibiotics, then you are at high risk. And so you need to have at least two to three bowel movements a day to be healthy. So start drinking your kombucha. Another tip that I have is fermented foods are a healthy way that the Japanese, the Koreans with kimchi uh, keep healthy. You know, um, miso also is part of Japanese culture. You know, miso soup with the onions and garlic are a great way to stay healthy and feed your gut. So vegetables and uh, phytonutrients and vegetables that are superfoods really help feed your gut, which is what keeps us healthy. That's why white flour and white trash and white sugar don't really do the trick. They make things worse, just like antibiotics. They destroy our good bacteria, which destroy up to 80% of our immune systems in the gut. So the skin's another area. So you don't want to put toxic ingredients on your skin. So you might be using bad shampoo or maybe wrong, you know, antiperspirant instead of natural deodorant. Uh, so you should be doing coconut oil and skin brushing and all those things are included in my 10 days to a super immune system as well. But you need to make sure that you take care of your skin. Your skin should be healthy. It shouldn't have acne or, or cystic acne or... Um, any kind of psoriasis, this is a sign of a weakened immune system. So get that fixed immediately to have a stronger, healthier immune system. Also, the color of your skin will be indicative of how much you exercise, you know, getting blood flow to your skin, getting the white blood cells to be able to flow freely to protect you like airport security. So the sinuses are something that are kind of overlooked. You know, we talked about sneezing and the danger of sneezing, but the truth is that, um, you know, if you don't take care of your sinuses, then these viruses, I believe, are harbored and they live deep in the sinuses. And sometimes they can live for, you know, months, if not years. So I treat a lot of chronic, I deal with a lot of chronic sinus infections where people have bad breath, they snore at night, 
They have uh, eye infections, ear infections related to their sinuses, and they have a stuffy nose. They blow their nose every morning. These are all signs of a weakened immune system. So you need to get your sinuses fixed and do a sinus flush. We have a new sinus rinse coming out. It will be a released that I've been working on and formulating now in the next couple weeks. But um, for now, call the clinic and we have uh, some amazing sinus rinses that we have available uh, that are important. So you should rinse your sinuses on a regular basis twice a day. So Western Medicine Model says that, okay, let's get tested for the virus. Let's, uh, you know, keep uh, at a distance, at least six feet away. Stay in your home as long as possible so we can kind of snuff the virus out so that it doesn't spread anymore. This all makes sense. And this is a great, you know, uh, model to follow. The only problem is there is no natural, no solution in Western medicine as far as medication. The reason is because, you know, if we believe in the vaccine model, um, basically it could take up to two to three years, you know, uh, who knows for sure to produce a vaccine. You know, a lot of us don't realize that it's not something that's easily produced. So we can't rely on that. And so all we can rely on in the Western model is to stay home, stay away from people and uh, try not to spread the disease or get the disease from somebody else uh, because there is real no natural solution. Now, if somebody were to get sick, we know from the latest reports I was listening to this morning through doctors that, that are uh, throughout the United States and the interviews that they've done, uh, they basically say we do not have enough medical equipment. We have 100,000 um, uh, respiratory type um, machines currently that would ventilators and whatnot that would take care of about 100,000 people so far. And uh, what they estimate we will have the need of 200,000 people or more once this virus, you know, hits to its peak capacity here, like the Italians in Italy and also uh, China. So we really are not prepared. Not only do we not have enough masks or gloves, uh, but, you know, many of the, you know, necessities that we have, such as even medications, there's 150 of the basic medications to keep people alive that are essential, such as insulin, that are made predominantly in China. So we need to be self-sufficient, become more self-sufficient, and that's the goal of this teleconference webinar, is to be able to teach you how to become more self-sufficient, because avoiding the hospital is going to be the key. You do not want to have to go to the hospital. Uh, I'm not saying don't go to the hospital if you get sick, but you want to avoid it because um, the capacity, you know, Italy is a perfect example of the future. They are, um, they just don't have enough medical uh, care to take care of everyone because of this pandemic that's going on. So the model that we use that we talk about is, you know, x-rays, medical testing, in this case, a coronavirus swab to test. And, uh, and then we know that there really isn't any real treatment except to keep people uh, alive and sustain them on uh, because it attacks the lungs to give them an ability to breathe through breathing and respiratory care and um, just to keep them going. And, but it's not really, it's, it's really your own immune system that will be handling the infection itself. So and once again, there are no medications or surgeries that will help to deal with this. On the Eastern model, however, you know, when I was at Davis, that's why I switched from engineering and uh, studying uh, nutrition my whole life. I decided that I was going to go into medicine, that I really wanted to do medicine, and that that was where my gift was, was understanding the human body and the healing potential of the body. So I read a book at Davis about Eastern medicine. So Eastern medicine model is really four circles fold, and that is food first. So, you know, I, I'm gonna t I talked to you about Brazil nuts, and uh, we talked about lemons and kiwis. So these are the foods that you should be buying from the store and not worry so much about toilet paper. This is what I have, what we have in our house. We have enough toilet paper, but we also make sure that we have enough food and, and fresh food with vitamin C, high vitamin C content, acai berries, uh, camu camu, and whatnot. We have a lot of supplements that have camu camu in it, such as Spanish black radish. And then finally, supplements. So you need the right supplements to supplement your weakness. And if you don't know your weakness, 
then you need to come in and find out what it is. So don't wait. Don't wait like me when I was a kid, when my house was broken into, I didn't realize how, what a weak structure we had in the house. So don't wait for something to happen, such as this crisis. There's still time for you to get in as a patient. We're still accepting new patients at this time. So uh, we will accommodate as many people as we can. So, you know, that's why we are here for your family and your friends to take care of you. So lifestyle is really important. Much, you know, you need more sleep, more water, more exercise. You need to exercise every day, morning and night. Uh, one of the things we did, uh, Carolyn and I, my wife, uh, we, we love exercise. We love to cycle, but we realized that we wouldn't be able to cycle outside so much because of the weather. So we got a Nordic track uh, cycling trainer, and we are so excited. I mean, I just, before coming to see you, I just um, did a ride in Turkey, uh, which is a vi virtual video ride that's been recorded, but it's real because the bike adjusts and, and uh, there's resistance that changes and there's a fan. I mean, it's like a real bike ride. And I mean, I'm just sweating by the end of 30 minutes and eight miles later, I'm just uh, sweating to death. So these are important things to realize that you have to set up your own gym and exercise program um, to help yourself and to be aware that you may not be able to go to the gym if we have quarantine. So therapies, you know, so do not forget to come into the clinic and get therapies. We have, you know, foot bath. Uh, testing, testing. Can you hear me? Okay, you're back. You're good? Okay. We're back online there. Sorry we lost you for a minute. Uh, but we are here. And uh, so thanks for staying with us. And... Um, Got it? Yeah. Okay, good. So uh, once again, this circle is, you know, includes uh, therapies. So don't forget to come in and get some therapies. We have some incredible therapies to boost your immune system called an e-power belt. Uh, foot baths will help detoxify the body. My philosophy is this, you know, if you take stress off of your body and get some acupuncture, you know, relieve stress to boost your immune system, then your body has more strength and more ability to fight off something else. But if you're juggling five balls of stress at the office and overwhelm, not enough sleep, and uh, some other chronic sinus infection, uh, then your body won't have the ability uh, to take care of itself. And so that's really important. So once again, these are the four circles of longevity. So over 95% of uh, all chronic disease is caused by food choices, food ingredients, nutritional deficiencies, and lack of physical exercise. So that's why I really emphasize, you know, it's amazing how, once again, I go back to the toilet paper, you know, people are buying toilet paper, but not thinking about their immune system. But you know, the best thing you can do is buy foods that will strengthen your nutritional deficiencies under stress. So nutrition is really what will defend you and will, will support your immune system. So we know from scurvy in the 1900s was when nutritional deficiencies became more aware through scurvy and rickets, such as vitamin D deficiencies. But uh, we need to be aware that these, uh, you know, there are nutritional deficiencies. That's the majority of disease today is from lacking nutrition from the foods that we're not eating, the foods we should be eating, and from the foods we, the poisons, poisonous foods we are eating that we shouldn't be. And also that includes water as well. And you notice it says lack of physical exercise. So the majority of people, I would say, when if I have a class of 20 people, I would say in a class that uh, maybe three of them say that they exercise on a daily basis. So get moving, get some exercise in and learn more about it. We're going to be doing a, a Qigong conference um, at the end of the month. So I invite you to that and I'll teach you. And we're going to be doing this outside if the weather permits. So anyone can come and it will be safe uh, to do on the outside in a park locally here in Rockland. And then we'll have some recorded material for you to watch afterwards so you can re remember the exercises. But you need to know how to breathe deeply, promote movement, move your lymphatic system, help your spleen, and boost your immune system. There's many different types of exercise, which we'll talk about at another time. So here we are, foods for the immune system. So anything that has color, red onions are better than white onions, garlic, 
onions, make soups. This is a great time to put on a crock pot for your family. If you have more family time now, <clears throat> take advantage of it and make some soups for your family. Put some miso soup, you know, together. Uh, it doesn't have to be complicated. Make sure you get enough uh, greens besides, you know, uh, toiletries. Make sure you get live green foods. They will keep in the fridge for a while. And frozen blueberries uh, are really still very good for you. But uh, lemons, limes, and citrus and grapefruit are really critical. But when you make this soup, you should also do things like Swiss chard and, um, you know, kale, spinach. You need greens. You need things with color to boost your immune system. Chlorophyll is known to clean out your blood, purify your body, and strengthen your immune system. Nothing could be more powerful. So these are some, um, you know, recommended purchases that you can buy in the store that I really like and highly recommend. Um, don't panic if you can't find them for some reason. You know, we'll, uh, there's, there's always apple cider vinegar, you know, uh, somewhere. And uh, so this is the Miracle Cleanse on the right there. It's one of my favorites because it's a modified, uh, you know, apple cider vinegar from Bragg's. Make sure you get the unfiltered Bragg's apple cider vinegar. Nothing else will do. And uh, the Fire Brew is really a great combination of apple cider vinegar with onions and garlic and all the things you should be doing in a citrus-based oil. And all you need is like, you know, a small amount, like half a teaspoon in warm water first thing in the morning to hydrate and then a little bit at night. So make sure, remember to do these things as prevention. It's just really, it works. This has gone back for centuries. You know, apple cider vinegar has been used uh, during the Greek time. In fact, it was, uh, they would drink it like a tonic, almost like wine, you know, to help stay healthy and strong. I mean, it's been around for centuries. So it really works. It really does. It's amazing. Ancient medicine. So, you know, we use, uh, you know, really whole food supplements. For those of you who don't know who we are or who I am, as a holistic practitioner, you know, we use whole food supplements, which sets us apart. So I really recommend our patients. And if you want to become a patient and stay healthy during this crisis, make sure you get at least two to three months of supplements. We don't know what's going to be happening with shipping and UPS and quarantine. And so we just recommend that you do this as a precaution. So we are here for you um, starting this Monday on forward, you know, moving forward. Make sure you email big orders to us. That's the fastest way for us to take care of your orders. And um, my staff's on hand, ready to go. Uh, we are ready to serve you as a community. And we love our patients as family. And uh, we want you to stay healthy. And so we want to make sure that you get what you need, you know, just in case. So let's stay connected. And let's make sure you have what you need, because that's critical. So these are some of the therapies I talked about. You know, uh, we have a Beamer. Uh, now, Beamer is no longer allowed to be sold in the United States. It's kind of shocking. Uh, the FDA is in the process of um, reevaluating. We know that it works. Definitely it works. And that's part of the, the freeze on that. But uh, for now, we have uh, the Beamers you need to get a Beamer treatment. If you just come in and get a Beamer treatment, increase your circulation 30%. Of course, that's going to help your white blood cells and your immune system. If you get an ultimate detox, then you get a Beamer plus the infrared sauna, and then you get the detox, you know, I mean, uh, what could be better, you know, to pull toxins out of your body? Come on in for some acupuncture, you know, in your treatment. So what I, a lot of people don't know is, uh, you know, because I've been treating patients for 20 years, uh, many times they don't realize that I do acupuncture, that I have more than just herbal medicine and nutritional training and and, uh, you know, that I deal with, um, you know, uh, internal medicine, you know. So there's so much that we do here in the clinic. We have everything you need to get to build and to restore your immune system. So here's some other technology we talked about earlier, which is the Zyto. So I just want to bring to your attention that if for some reason you can't come in, you feel concerned about coming in, I recommend you buy a cradle or we send a cradle to one of your family or friends in another state or another country. So we can do this anywhere at any time. So we are a global clinic at this point. Uh, so make sure you don't remember, you know, don't forget that, that we can take care of anyone, anywhere, anytime. And uh, there's the e-power belt on top there. And then we also have the Jade bed massage bed. This helps detox 
and uh, release toxins in the body, gets rid of stress, realigns the spine, helps open the acupuncture channels. It's, it heats up to 149 degrees, the jade bed. So, you know, why not come in and get your treatment? I mean, it's just, there's no reason not to. Uh, we have essential oils going throughout the clinic. We have filters, and we are aware of uh, any any uh, concerns that people have. And one of the things that people tell me continually over the last 20 years is they say to me always that, you know, I just don't get sick like I used to. I don't get the flu. I don't get colds like I used to. And, and this program is really helping my immune system. Number one, um, you know, comment that people say continually. We also have a way to tell the best foods to strengthen your immune system, which is a technique called a hair scan out of Germany. So I highly recommend that you come in and get that. That has to be in person, but we have that available. So why not find out any hidden viruses that you're not aware of? We can test for viruses, mold spores, bacteria, gut flora. All of this can be detected from four hair follicles from the back of your neck. Doesn't hurt takes 20 minutes and you get a 38 page report. Incredible. This is what I mean by this modern technology. So what can you do? So this is the important part and then we'll go into questions and, um, and then we'll finish. So, uh, so drink more water. You actually need uh, water. It's really important. One of the things I just did recently, Carol and I got these large jugs. This is um, PBA free, you know, plastic. Um, and of course, metal or glass is always better. Uh, but the truth is you just need something you can carry around to measure the amount of water that you're drinking. So don't go without water, you know. And then we have water drops that you want to put that are mineral drops that are critical uh, that you should be using, um, you know, in your water. And so then the second thing is uh, we have created a summer's super immune elixir. And this immune elixir is basically uh, a way to support your immune system. It's a customized um, herbal blend that I've made uh, that, is, uh, that I know for, through research will increase your immune system 2,000% within 24 hours. Uh, so, you know, we, so far we've been able to meet the needs of our people, but I really recommend that you call in and you get your order in right away. And we're recommending a minimum of two to four ounces of the summer's super immune elixir. You're going know, to take like 10 to 15 drops a day uh, to make sure to stay healthy. So we are not guaranteeing or treating any condition here. I just want to clarify that. We are only offering what we know, what I know clinically to be helpful and to be effective in helping support your immune system. Why not, you know, support your immune system? So we also have Summer's Balm. This is so exciting. So um, after uh, much experience with essential oils, I've created my own essential oil blend. And these are the highest quality essential oil blends. This is our, uh, excuse me, this is our roll-on. Um, I had the wrong one there. This is our roll-on. comes in our little green roll-on ball. So you can roll this on anywhere in your body, on your neck, your hands. You can do a breathing treatment at home. You should use this daily. Uh, we also have essential oil balm that will help to support your immune system. It smells great. That's the, that's the uh, overall response that I'm getting, that it really helps open up the lungs, helps deal with viruses, and uh, it's just something you should be doing on a regular basis. So you also need to get on a program. So uh, if you're not on a program, what that means is basically I found out your weak areas in your body. I help you to make them stronger with the right foods, the right supplements, lifestyle, the right exercise, and the right therapies for you. So you might have weak lungs and you may not know it, you know, and uh, you might have weak adrenal glands or kidneys or whatever it might be. Maybe your liver's weak. So don't wait for something to happen like I did as a kid when somebody broke into our house, you know. You need to make sure you get the bars up, get the alarm system in, and uh, protect yourself today. There's still time. Stock up on supplements. Like I said, any patients out there or people that aren't even patients, if you'd like to just come in to get a free assessment, uh, we're still offering that as a free assessment for you to come meet me. Um, we'll schedule that with the staff. And so call in the office, find out more about that.
So the other thing is sunlight, you know, so you need sunlight. Uh, so remember that we're being quarantined, basically self-quarantined and the, the, you know, it's kind of bad weather for the next couple of weeks. So don't forget to get your sunlight. So sunlight has been proven. In fact, it was used in the 1918 flu uh, pandemic of the Spanish flu. They actually put patients outside of tents because there were so many people uh, in the sun and they knew and they found out that people who were in the sun and fresh air recovered quicker and faster and healed and they survived more fully than the people that were inside the hospital. Can you imagine? So exercise daily, morning and night. We can talk more about that in our exercise program. Keep healthy routines and do not forget to do the things that are working. You know, maybe you'll stop going to the gym because it's closed, right? So do jump rope outside or, um, you know, get a trampoline. Do not stop your healthy routines, please. Stock up on superfoods, you know. Uh, like I said before, instead of, you know, so many paper towels and hand cleaner, which is important, uh, stock up on lemons and acai berries and blueberries and things that will help your immune system. And then finally, come in for therapies or just do a phone consult. So no matter what, you know, we have great relationships with our patients. We appreciate all of you and think of you like family want to thank you for all that you do and all your support over the years. And so we want to still be there for you. We want to know, want you to know that even though this is a crisis in the global crisis of the world, uh, and it is serious, that there really, you don't have to fear something that you can do something about. And the one thing I always tell patients, you may not be able to control the outside, but you can control the inside. And that's a combination of your thoughts, how well you think, and, um, you know, staying positive. You know, if you're home, I, I say watch comedies, you know. Watch funny movies. Stay fun. You know, laugh with your family. You know, crack jokes. Laughter will help boost your immune system. Stay positive and be adaptable. You know, it's one of the things that um, I really believe in is being adaptable. You know, when things don't work out, then put the car in reverse and go another way. So whatever it might be, if it's work that seems to be shut down for you, your finances, and it seems like it's, you know, you'll never be the same or it's hopeless, I can promise you that there is hope. In fact, uh, in closing today, before you know, I'm, I'm going to answer questions in a minute, I would just like to say that just a reminder that uh, there, our president has um, assigned today as the National uh, Day of Prayer. And so I'd like all of us to uh, take a moment of silence to pray for our families, for our nation, and for the world, and for all the people that are suffering. And I truly believe in the power of prayer. You know, I know that all of us might have different beliefs, but um, I know that uh, God is watching over us, and I know that prayer is still the most powerful thing we can do. And so let's use today... Uh, with the remaining hours that are left for today and ongoing to uh, use that uh, for prayer and to pray for uh, help. And because uh, I know that there are natural and safe solutions to overcome this crisis and future crises that are to come as well. So we don't have to fear. We can have hope. And hopefully that I've offered you some hope and some things that you can do. But the last thing is remember that we have a 10 days to a super immune system program that's coming out. It will be posted on our membership site. So become a member. That's one way to get it. We'll also have it for sale online and we'll have it for sale in the clinic. And so there's just so much information that's packed in this, you know, these video series and that I, I just couldn't even, you know, list it here. There's just too much to talk about. So I'll be talking about that in the video series being released in the next one or two weeks. So make sure you look into that as well. Get your summer super immune system elixir and balm. Get on a program. Stay on your program. Come in for therapies. And remember, we are here for you. And don't forget that we are here and uh, prayer is the most powerful thing you can do besides taking care of yourself. So now I'm going to leave it open for questions. And uh, Avery and I are handling these questions here. And uh, so what's our first question here, Avery? So make sure you go to the Q&A box on the bottom side there. If you see it on the very bottom of the screen, you have to click on there, and then you type in a question. 
So you can even do that on your phone if need be. Okay, here we go. We got a first question. Is it possible to for coronavirus to lay dormant? Uh, yes, and that's what, uh, correct. And that's where uh, people that are carriers, basically it's kind of lying dormant in a person. And that's what, that's why I say that people kind of has a twilight immune system. Basically that's how you can become a carrier because it can lay dormant in you. And then, you know, you become uh, the carrier and then you can infect other people that are elderly or that's why it's important that you stay healthy. And that's one way to protect yourself and other people is to not carry the virus by being healthy. Second question is, is the summer's super immune elixir uh, safe for children? Yes. It actually tastes great as well. Uh, so uh, we have a recommended dose of 10 to 15 drops a day, uh, a lower dose for children, you know, like between, I would say five to 10 drops for children if they're not sick. If uh, an adult would take like up to 15 drops a day, and if you're sick, you want to take two to three droppers a day uh, to remain healthy. Does the elixir help if you are sick or just a preventative? It's actually for both. And that's why I feel that uh, it's both if you are uh, just prevention and also to help resolve uh, illness as well. I designed it in such a way it's based on a Chinese formula and uh, also upon a... Uh, um, an Indian old, an Indian remedy as well as other uh, ancient methods or uh, formulas. And so I made this combination of formulas so that we can help stay healthy during this global crisis. And uh, it will also help with uh, resolving sickness as well. I just received the summer super immune elixir. Do you recommend the drops under the tongue or in water? It really doesn't matter. I take it directly in my mouth. I think it's stronger that way. But you can also put it in water, you know. Uh, that would work fine too. Uh, it won't dilute it in any way. Just take it. That's the best way. So, so if uh, coronavirus lays dormant, can it come back years from now in someone much like EBV? You know, I think that that's really unknown to this time. I don't have any facts to uh, answer that. Uh, but I will say that, um, let me give you a fact about viruses that, as an example, a virus can lay dormant, say, in a glacier, you know, and, uh, you know, from a civilization, because they found uh, old civilizations, you know, where they find bones of animals and whatnot. And so you could literally, viruses can be um, laid dormant for, you know, hundreds of years. So that's possible. And then other, this virus in particular, though, is very heat sensitive. So that's another reason to come in and do the sauna and uh, do the jade bed and do other therapies that are involving heat and also the sun. So it actually is a very delicate and very um, sensitive virus. And that's the good news. Um, but uh, when it's cold outside and very damp in uh, damp, cold environments, then it tends to thrive more, but it's very sensitive to heat, unlike other viruses. So how do you measure the strength of the immune system? That's a great question. So what we do basically is uh, we have something called a bioimpedance, and this is a test that we do on the skin based on, um, it's about a $5,000 machine that we use in the clinic, and we measure the body's resistance. There's an equation uh, and we put it into the computer, and then it calculates uh, how much hydration you have in your cells, how much nutrition is in your cells, and how strength, how strong your immune system is. So it's called a phase angle, and everyone's phase angle should be above a seven. And uh, so many people that are getting cancer or getting sick or have a weak immune system have a phase angle below a five. And so uh, this is really a European test technique that very few practitioners in the United States actually have, which we, you know, we really pride ourselves on having the latest technology to help people. And so we have this technology. Good question. Uh, you suggested we order via email. Which email address? So it'd be front desk 
at summers, S-O-M-M-E-R-S, holistichealth.com. So that's the address that you want to uh, send your orders to. So once again, that we are offering the uh, Summers Immune Elixir to people that aren't patients, so you can get enough for your family and your friends. But uh, we are currently, we're just keeping it uh, pretty much for you and your family and your friends uh, so that we can supply you what you need. Uh, but definitely don't wait to get stock on that. So, okay, what, uh, what are your thoughts on hand sanitizers? Since they are hard to come by, what are you recommending uh, besides soap and water? Well, my understanding is really from the latest research, and once again, I'm basing it on facts and the latest experts, you know, it's really soap and water is honestly enough uh, to take care of this virus. Now, it's not practical to do that uh, when you're out and about, but uh, this, uh, actually this balm that I made with essential oils is enough, I feel, to disinfect your, your hands and to kill the virus. I put a lot of different essential oil herbs in there that will kill the virus. So, uh, so really, ultimately, um, hand sanitizers. The risk with that is, you know, um, there are you know problems with using alcohol directly in your skin. I'm not discrediting, you know, the fact that it will kill the virus. So, uh, try to use the most safest and natural way uh, to kill the virus, which would be essential oils and soap and water is what I would recommend. You can also get soap that has some tea tree oil in it or something with a little extra boost. So besides the super immune elixir, what specific supplements do you recommend to boost the immune system, uh, i.e. echinacea? Well, basically I would say if you're already on an immune system, uh, if you're already on a program with me, there's no need to worry. I feel like between the super immune system elixir and your program, I've already put you on something that will boost your immune system, and we already have those supplements in stock. If you have some personal questions directly for me, you can email me um, uh, directly. Uh, you know, you have that uh, practitioner line with me as a patient, but otherwise, I would say not to worry about it because uh, I've already pretty much taken care of your immune system through your program and through the super immune system elixir. I feel like it's a a double support system. I would also, uh, you know, subscribe or purchase the uh, 10 days to super immune system, elix super immune system uh, when that comes out next week or so. And then you'll, uh, I'll talk about more fully about things you can do at home that will boost your immune system as well. Does, does it need to be antibacterial soap or even very basic simple soap? No, like I said, uh, all the authorities say that it's just basically just soap. You know, soap is enough. Hot water and soap is enough to uh, kill the virus. And uh, so that's the blessing is that it's very sensitive. It's heat sensitive. And, um, and I, I feel like essential oils are beyond anything we've ever dreamed of. In fact, they were used in the time of Jesus, when Jesus was on the earth for embalming and disinfectants. And uh, so... Essential oils like frankincense and whatnot are, are very antiseptic. Even citrus oils like lemon oil and uh, bitter orange are all very incredible uh, antiseptics. So essential oils alone plus the soap are plenty to uh, keep you healthy and strong. And uh, remember that the sinuses are real link, link to keeping uh, healthy as well. So, okay. Hopefully that answered your question. So we got some more questions rolling in. You guys are doing great. Hey, I'm just glad to be able to answer these questions and a good audience today. We've really, a lot of people are involved here. So with regards to hand washing, it's really important to rub your hands for a good 20 seconds or more. Uh, yes, that's true. That you want to make sure that you're washing your hands for a long enough period of time, 20 to 30 seconds. And, um, I would even, you know, wouldn't hurt to even wash them twice, you know. That's another, you know, uh, tip that uh, many people are offering as well. Never thought I would uh, wish for those triple-digit uh, summers, right, uh, involving heat. Yes. Yes, Bob, that's true. Uh, that is so true. Yeah, but uh, we're sure waiting for it. I thought for sure that the spring was coming early and, 
Now we've got rain again, which I know we need, but uh, yes, the summer will disinfect um, and uh, purify the air. And it's really another piece to the healing process of this global crisis for sure. Thank you. We are grateful for you. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, well, I'm just grateful for all of you and uh, grateful that I can help uh, be a part of this. Um, and I just want you to know that there's hope and that we can work together as a community. And so I'm really excited about, I'm so excited when Avery and I talked about doing this online. And this is something we've talked about and planned for quite some time. And so now this is just the opportunity. So I would like you to think the same way, you know, that this is, this could be just a great opportunity for you to grow in a way that you've never grown before, to be pushed in a way that you've never been pushed, and uh, to really become a different person and to uh, learn in another way and to spend some time with your family as well. So would love to have these conference calls ongoing once a week for updates on the crisis, even two a week. Thank you so much for everything. Uh, well, Jennifer, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's exactly what Avery and I decided. We just had a talk about this and um, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do this every week, twice a week. We're also going to have some podcasts where we're going to offer some, uh, bring on some guest speakers. I have a lot of uh, experts on from live blood analysis to uh, experts that have brought in the uh, live, you know, the hair analysis to, so I have a lot of great people that we're going to interview and uh, this is going to be a lot of fun and very informative. And uh, so this is just the beginning of uh, weekly conferences. We'll keep you posted. And uh, I'm just excited because I'm like you, right? I mean, like it's so despairing to watch the news sometimes and to get all this information. Is it true? Is it real? Do we really need to be, you know, concerned or not? And so uh, really what it comes down to, if you take care of yourself, strengthen your immune system, and you know your weaknesses and you're on a program, there's no reason to fear, you know, really. So amen. Okay. Love it. So any suggestions for keeping my Maltese Sammy healthy? Uh, yes, Margie. Uh, Good to hear from you. So, um, yes, I do have some suggestion. We actually have a, a standard process line for dogs. And uh, so we could talk about that. You know, why don't you send me an email to remind me? I uh, send it to the front desk and we can order some special order, some supplements for your animals as well. And that's a great idea. And um, the good news so far, you know, there's been some reports of uh, some coronavirus because cats even carry the coronavirus, but Typically, it's a different type of virus because, remember, it's a, a group of viruses is the coronavirus, and this is a particular one that we're talking about, 19. But dogs, you know, um, and cats pretty much are pretty safe from this. They don't, you know, we're not jumping from species to species, and that's what I've learned so far from the experts. So, um, but let's keep Sammy healthy anyway, and um, so email me, Margie, and we'll get him some supplements for dogs through standard process. It's a great, uh, great formulas for animals. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see if we have any more questions at this time. Will you have a problem getting supplements? So far, we don't feel like that will be a problem. Um, you know, I've always had backup plans. Anyone that knows me, I have plan A, B, C, D, and E, and even Z. So, um, that's the reason why I really like carrying so many different types of supplements in different companies in case something happens. I have a backup plan. Uh, we also feel like we have a uh, large stock in herbal formulas and elixirs. So no matter what happens, we could always make an elixir to help you with any condition that you have to help support your immune system and your problems. So remember that we don't just deal with immune system problems, that we deal with hormones, digestive issues, insomnia. Um, you know, whatever it might be, weight loss, we still do those other, you know, treatment protocols to help people achieve their greatest level of health. So today we're just focused on the immune system, but remember, we still are a full service clinic uh, that offers safe, effective, and whole food uh, supplement solutions uh, for the whole body and for the whole family. Regarding supplements, do you plan to be able to ship them out if we have a federal 
lockdown? And can you ship them from a home location outside of the office? Uh, yes, we are actually in the process of taking care of that as well. And uh, we have a plan B for that as well. So yes, we, we feel that um, there's no reason why shipping wouldn't be able to continue. Um, Cause even, you know, my latest uh, discoveries or research shows that they're even talking about shutting down restaurants and, you know, churches for now. That's why everyone's gone online and even, um, uh, but however, medical will stay open because people still need their medical, which we are considered medical, which is why you should still come in for treatment. Uh, but as far as shipping, I don't see any problems so far. And uh, that, but I do feel that it's important to have at least two to three months of supplements just in case. So that's just backup plan B. Okay. So I would get some extra supplements on hand for you and your family. And then you can always communicate to me, you know, through uh, email and or through teleconference. And we can always communicate through the phone so that once you have those supplements in stock, no matter what happens, I can advise you and direct you as to what to do to protect you and your family ongoing, which is our goal. Okay. All right. So how are we looking, Avery? We got pretty much... All the questions answered? Okay, super. So it's 7.30, guys. So uh, anyway, so I want to thank you for being here with us and uh, hope you learned something. You know, give us some feedback uh, through emails or reviews online, if you would. Uh, I'd appreciate anything we can do differently. Let us know topics, you know, for the upcoming weeks that you would like to know more about uh, in reference to the virus so that we can talk about it at our next teleconference in a week. And we'll do a teleconference. The next one will be Thursday. Instead of our Thursday night class at 7, we'll do a teleconference Thursday as well. And then, um, and then typically we'll also be posting our podcast where we'll do the interviews with our experts that I'll be inviting online with us. And those will be more recorded events. So look for those as well. And don't forget to stay connected. Uh, if you're a patient, stay a patient. Don't worry. You know, we're here for you. If you're not a patient, don't wait to get on a program. Don't wait for a crisis in your own life, okay? So for now, uh, many blessings to you. May God bless you and your family. May you recognize this day of national prayer. May we stay connected as a community. Uh, we may be separated in our homes, but we're connected as a community, and that's our goal for Carolyn and I is to remain that you are our family. And so for now, mahalo, and I'll see you soon.